Life as Girls. Life as Girls. We have a lot to say and we hope you're listening. Welcome back to Life is Girls. I'm your host, Aubrey. Two years ago today, I took an environmental science class. And like most people, I heard about climate change and I heard about how our planet's getting warmer and how it affects the environment. Um, But I never really thought that I would be a part of that and be a part of making that change. Um, I felt a lot more responsible nowadays because I've learned about how our choices can make an impact on the world around us. Um, And so that's why I I'm inspired to study environmental science in college, um, but this isn't about me today. We're, I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest, Alex. Um, she took her interests about ecology a step or two further. Um, she created a club at her school. So Alex, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to talk with Thank you. Thank you so much for having yeah. me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm right so now. excited to ask you all these questions. Um, so the first thing I wanted us to talk about is just for you to introduce yourself and kind of tell us about yourself. So, as I said, my name is Alex. Uh, I'm also a senior in high school. Um, kind of some some of my hobbies, I guess, I like running, cool. unrelated yes. to ecology, but I like running, I like doing art, which I did end up using in my club, so we can talk about that later if you want. Perfect. Um, what else? Oh, I've been a Girl Scout since Daisy, so that's kind of important. Cool. Yes. Uh, yes for totally. the video <laughs> listeners, you can see all Obviously. of the bling on my sash. Yes. Oh, um, yes. And then I've earned both my bronze, silver, and gold awards. So that is so cool. Some fun facts about me. Great. So impressive. Actually, you're so impressive by everything that you've done. Like high school, you're you're doing a lot. Um, but you're also, you started a new club at your school. So why don't you tell us about kind of how that started? What was the inspiration and like how it came about? Yeah. So my ecology club started as part of my gold award project, which right was trying to target, I guess, environmental education in schools. So my project in its entirety was making an educational garden at my school and part of my sustainability to go along with that was making an ecology club so I made the club and I kind of wanted a club that could not only sustain the garden after I was gone but I wanted a club that could like share the interest of the garden outside of like just the scope of the people that were interested if that makes sense no it makes total sense and you said you started at your school and there wasn't like a bunch of it's not like a club culture school. That's kind of what you're talking about. Um, so going on with that, like, what do you do in your club and how do you make it different from just like everyday class? Yeah. So I think our club is able to reach areas in class that we don't necessarily reach. And it helps students to find things that they're interested in related to the subject. So like, I guess, for example, when I was starting out the club, one thing I was really interested in was flowers and how like the pH of soil can change like flower color and stuff like that. So that would be an example of like in class, you might learn about the chemistry behind that and all that. But in a club like the ecology club, you could like learn about specifically flower chemistry and stuff. So it lets you apply stuff you learn in the classroom to outside where your interests might be, I guess. Yeah. And that's really cool because like in class, it's definitely more of like a structured learning thing. But like, I don't know if everyone's ever been like talks about how much fun it is. And yeah. so like in a club aspect, you get to have like that fun. Um, yeah. So moving on, I, I was also wondering like you, why was offering an ecology club at your school important to you? So as you kind of said, my school isn't really like a huge like club culture kind of school. Yeah. So part of it was I saw a place to fill just in like, oh, I have a really deep interest in this. I think it would be cool if yeah, other totally. people could share that interest. Part of it was also just like me noticing stuff around my school. So this is why I started my gold ward in the first place. Yeah. Just noticing little things. Like I, I was kind of like the oddball at my school for doing certain things. Like, for example, I personally don't use Ziploc bags in my lunch or anything. I try to mm-hmm. reuse, uh, reduce sin- single-use plastics, all totally. that kind of stuff. That's so amazing. So, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like my classmates were kind of like, like, why? Why do you do this? <laughs> why are you like this? So... I kind of saw that need. Yeah. And then, it, so it was partly that with the conservation. And then there was the gardening side of the ecology club, which was also just like people I knew. So I was interested in gardening even before all of this with the gold award. Yeah, totally. Um, and some of my classmates were too. And it had actually been like a long plan at the school for people to be like, you know, it would be so cool if we had a garden. And so I was, like, yeah. I was like, you know, I have the time. Like, let's do it. I have the resources. <laughs> I need to do something for my gold award. Like, why not? If there's an interest for it at the school for gardening. Yeah. And, like, then I could combine that conservation aspect, teaching people, like, you know, why 
why are you like this? Combining with people's already being interested in gardening. Totally. So that was kind of the merge of those two. Yeah, that's great. I love, like, it's so much more special coming from, like, someone who's really passionate about it rather than someone who's just kind of doing it to, like, check off their list. Like, oh, I need to do my gold award. I'll just, like, do this. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, and kind of on that subject, like, what do you what do you teach in the ecology club? Yeah, so... Like I said, it's kind of com- combination. I can't speak to that. It's okay. With it's both okay. <laughs> gardening and ecology and, like, conservation stuff. So it's a mixture. So when we started out, it was more focusing on, like, gardening stuff, how mm-hmm. to plant. So, like, our first, quote-unquote, lesson was I actually had the ecology club before I even finished my Gold Award project. That's so they cool. were some of the volunteers who helped me complete the construction of my project. Yeah. So our first, like, teaching lesson was to learn how to plant in the garden. Okay, Like, great. learn how yeah. to do all that stuff. So we started out with, like, learning how to garden, basically. Amazing. And yeah. then that progressed. So our current project right now is about recycling. So cool. we're yes. figuring out the whole process on how do we get recycling at our school because uh, we moved buildings, so we don't have recycling at our school anymore. Okay, so yeah. we were working on how to bring that back. In the future... Uh, we're looking at our next project is probably going to relate to monarch butterflies. Uh, part of my Gold Award project was writing out lesson plans for, like, younger students. Because cool. I, I go to a K-12 through school. So cool. I wrote out okay. lesson plans for elementary students. So that's we're looking at that for our next project. So teaching the younger kids about that's monarchs. So cool. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I think the recycling program is really cool because... For our school, the school I go to, um, we don't, like, have a recycling program at all. Like, we have recycling bins, and um, from what I've heard from my teachers, they're like, oh, it just goes into the trash, So, which is unfortunate. So kind of how – can you talk about how you got, like, the recycling program in place at your school? Because I know that's kind of – it's a big task to take on. Oh, and we're definitely still in the process of it. We're not complete all the way yet, but – so – The whole process of getting it in, luckily the administration was already familiar with the Ecology Club and the project since I had worked with them previously on Gold Award. So how it kind of went, we got together as a club and we were discussing, you know, what do we want to do for our next project? And I brought up, I was like, hey guys, did you notice since we moved schools, there's no recycling if you've seen that. And they were like, yeah, I kind of noticed all the paper is just (laughs) going in the trash. Um, So we decided as a club, like, hey, let's tackle that as our next project. Let's see if we can get administration to bring it back. Yeah. So the whole process of that, like, we drafted it up together. And then we emailed administration. We're like, hey, can we meet during lunch for a meeting? Can we talk to you about this? And they were like, sure. So we met with our principal, and she gave us kind of the lowdown on, like, if we're going to have this, we need this, this, this. Yeah. And we learned, like, kind of what they did in the past in the old building. So it used to be our recycling program. We had, like, the... Junior National Honor Society, it was their job to pick up all of the recycling and all that stuff. Okay, right. And so we had these big kind of ugly looking green bins in all yes, the rooms okay. that we would have. So they were kind of outlining like what worked with that program, what we needed to change. So we decided, hey, we're going to do like a rotation of all the clubs That's we cool. do have at our school to yeah. be involved in recycling. Uh, and then they were like, can you have not ugly green bins? Please? Can you please have like nicer bins? And like we're pretty like, ones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so from that feedback, we were able to go and like visit Lowe's <laughs> yeah. and go like see, compare the kinds of bins, like the price and all that and figure out what we need to do. Right now we're in the implementation phase. Cool. So we're kind of figuring out like the monetary aspect. Do we need to raise money? Is the school willing to contribute since it's benefiting the school? We're figuring right. that out right now. But we have the bins picked out. We have the locations we're putting them in figured out. We're just trying to implement it, get that it all is together. That's awesome. It's cool. It sounds like such a collaborative like club in such a collaborative environment. Um, like, For us at our school, there's a lot of clubs you join where you do it for, like, attendance purposes. Like, you're there just to to say you're there, to put it on an application somewhere, but you're not really getting a lot out of it. And that's, like, I know that's a lot of my clubs, but this sounds, your club sounds, like, better than that because you're taking a step further. There's, like, collaboration, and it seems, like, friendly and, like, lots of conversational, but also educational. So how do you, how do you make this keep people engaged. I appreciate you saying that because I I do try very hard. It sounds, no, it sounds amazing. Everyone's collaborating together. I feel like that's every club's dream. Yeah, I try super hard because I 
am in a lot of clubs, so I yeah. see that echo, like what yeah, you said about cool. kind of the attendance check off kind of thing. Yeah. And I've definitely been in clubs where that is the case, and I'm kind of like, eh. yeah. Exactly. But I, I think the collaborative aspect itself kind of comes from my history of being in clubs and like seeing that experience. It's uh, really cool. Funnily yeah. enough, the robotics club we have for younger scouts here at mm-hmm. Kadoski. I actually am a mentor for it and I used to be like in that robotics program. Oh, that's awesome. And so that's yeah. kind of where I got that from is like the collaboration, like you have to contribute to everything. Right. So okay. kind of that team aspect, I did sports when I was younger. So I was like, okay, we have to all contribute if we want to yeah, get things done. Totally. So I kind of tried to bring that into the club because I was like, it's more fun when we have totally. multiple opinions. Yes, and there are definitely people in the club that aren't like, super, super into ecology. But I think that's okay because, you know, we need some outside perspective. If, totally. we're, if we're all agreeing on the same thing, it's like, we don't know what other people at the school believe. And that's yeah. what we're trying to reach. That's who we're trying to reach, right? We're trying to exactly. reach the people that don't know anything about ecology or haven't been interested in the past. So it's good to have those people that maybe not super engaged, but they're able to give us a unique insight in that way. Great. So yeah. I try to, when we have club meetings, if there's people like sitting in the back, like all quiet, like, just pondering. I'm, yeah, pondering. Yeah. I'm like, hey, <laughs> what do you think? What are you thinking yeah. about this? And half the time they just freeze and they're like, uh, like they did not expect me to call on them. I'm like, come here, <laughs> come here. L- let's talk. talk let down. me let me hear your opinion right now. Yeah. So, and we try to do everything fairly democratically. Like, I'll I'll get up. I love my slideshow. So I'll get up with my slideshow and I'll Thanks. put everything together. Um, and then I'll be like talking about pros and cons of stuff. For example, the recycling project, we were comparing like the types of bins. And so I put pictures up of the bins. So I was like, here's the prices yeah, of perfect. everything. Uh, and then the club discusses and like votes on what they think would be best. So we have polls. <laughs> perfect. Oh, it's so cool. And I was just like wondering how is your club like started versus where it is now in terms of like kind of like what you've seen engagement wise, but also like the number of members and things like that. So I would say number of members has generally stayed relatively the same, but I go to a small school, so I didn't expect a huge growth. Great. What I did experience was like more awareness in the student body. Definitely when I first started out, like perspective overall in the student body about the club was like, it's kind of (laughs) weird. Like, like some of my, like, I guess acquaintances in my grade were like, why are you, what are you doing? Like, just, yes, okay. Like, like I get that. <laughs> they, they were kind of like, AJ and her ecology <laughs> club, like, okay. Um, but like, as I got more serious and we, and I actually got members, they're like, oh, it's actually like, legitimate it's club, established club, they're doing things, yeah. whoa. Um, and so in that awareness with the student body and then also the teachers. So part of our activity in the ecology club is plants for teachers. So that's cool. We yeah. match plants to teachers in rooms with like the same care requirements. So some rooms in our school don't have windows, but the teachers still want plants, obviously. Right. So we figured out a system to get those teachers to be able to have plants in their room. And so during the weekend, we put them in a room with sunlight. And then during the week, we bring them back and they're that's staying alive. So you yeah. must be doing something right. So in that way, we grew an awareness of the teachers as well because they were like, oh, this club is actually giving back to the teachers as well. We're allowed to have plants in our room. So exciting. And it was so funny. So many of the teachers were like so excited. Behind it, yeah. Yes. They they were like, oh my gosh, can I have plants from my room? (laughs) room?" It was great. Um, So in that way, the club itself has not grown a lot, but the reactions to it outside it definitely have. Which is so important. And then the membership, I feel like people are dedicated. I was afraid when I first started out. I was like, you know, what if people don't join. Like I said, I had a, like people were interested in gardening, but I was like, you know, what if people don't feel like having the time commitment to the club, you know? Yeah. Or like, what if people just don't join? Or what if like after I graduate, it goes away? But I've been very pleased that everybody who has joined the club and like commits to coming to meetings is pretty engaged. And so I'm not super concerned about it continuing after my graduation because I I hope that they will be okay. Yeah, So totally. And on that note, like what do you have like plans for how it's going to live on past you? Yes, I do. So that was part of the gold award sustainability aspects, right? right? To get all of that sorted out. Um, But I'm planning on writing a list of all the things that I learned over the course of it and a giant binder (laughs) giving it to them. So kind of like organization of the club, like construction of the garden, everything needed for maintenance. But I'm also kind of teaching 
the members that as we just go along with the club passing down responsibilities. So for example, with the teacher plants over long periods of break, so like winter break, students will bring the plants home to take care of them so that the teachers yeah. don't have to worry about it. Totally. So uh, I'm thinking of one specific person that I was like, hey, can you help me out with taking the plants home? And she was like, yes. And Great. and she took them home and she's texting me pictures and she's like, look, they're alive, they're alive. Oh, and she so and cute. we both brought them back and she's like, I don't want to give the plants back. <laughs> I love them. I love the plants. And I, that just made me laugh. So I'm helping them with the responsibilities as we're going on. Yeah. And that, that's kind of the plan is like at the end of the year, being able to elect somebody to be president, vice president, to manage all the roles that I've kind of been dictating myself. Yeah, totally. Uh, that, that was the joke going into the club. I was like, this is authoritarian. <laughs> I, it, it was kind of weird to pass off responsibilities when I was the one who like built it and all that. But right. I've been very yeah. pleased on how it's gone. People kind of naturally found what they were interested in and yeah. in what aspects of the club. So that's kind of my plan. And yeah. then the responsibility. Totally. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. I just like, this is so impressive because there's just like, it sounds such like a fun environment and something like, I feel like if that was at our school, there'd be so much more of like a learning aspect as well of just like, a, there's something more to do than beyond what you can get in class. Um, but you've just like kind of like made this club that kind of seems like perfect in every aspect. That's me. That She didn't pay me to say that. Um, <laughs> But I'm just like, I'm wondering if you were to give advice to someone else about starting their own club, kind of like, what would you want them to be aware of or like be prepared for? Because I know this is, it's just a lot. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Oh, there, there are so many things. You saw the look on my face. I'm like, like, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. There, there's <laughs> so many things I could list out. So I would say the main like problem that we encounter in our club is meetings. Oh my goodness, okay. the meetings. Yeah. So I said we don't have a lot of clubs at our school, but the clubs we do have meet every single week, pretty much. Right. So, okay. And I'm in a lot of those clubs. So totally. the hardest part for us has been scheduling out when we're going to meet. Okay. And obviously yes. our schedule relates to our productivity. So that's why I feel yeah. we haven't gotten a lot done so far and we're just getting started because it has been very hectic and figuring out when to meet totally. and all that. Yeah. Um, so I would say the biggest thing for me, once the club was up and started, not even just starting the club, was just scheduling, scheduling, scheduling and communication with the members to be able to say, our yeah. meeting is this week in this room. Uh, I have food, by the way. <laughs> yes, just bribe them a little yeah. bit. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, for anybody trying to start a club, bring food for the cur first couple meetings and people will Perfect. show up. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I, everyone does that, actually. Now I'm thinking about it. Donuts, cookies, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It works. People show up. Yeah. The, totally the trick works. is making sure people don't come in the room and then try to steal the food and then leave. Oh, and yeah, they can't, yeah, they no, can't when, leave once when they're in, they're in. Yeah, when yeah. people walk in the room, I'm like... All right, you've taken the food. It's like the fae. I'm like, you've taken the food. You're staying for the club <laughs> meeting now. So the, I would say that's the biggest thing for me once the club is up and running. The In the launching of the club, I would say recruitment. Huge, Great. huge. Yeah, so what our school has, we have like an orientation day that you can come in and meet all your teachers before okay. actual okay. class. Yeah, yeah. And so what I did, I was like, hey, administration, can I like set up a table in the hallway to so recruit? So oh I set goodness. up right outside the science rooms, very, yes. very strategic. Mm -hmm. And so I had like my booth and I had a little cute poster. And this is where my art interest comes into play because oh, my yeah. poster was very cute in my opinion. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I so, <laughs> and, and I had little like plant starters to give out. I was like, here, you want a plant? You want a plant? Yes. You want to join the club? And so I had a big list of sign up and like with their phone number and email. So once school got started, I could contact all of them and be like, hey, you know, you right. signed up for this club. Do you yes. want to actually join? So I would say that was super important because if I hadn't done that, it would have been a lot harder to get awareness for the club. Totally. But pretty much everybody who was at orientation saw the booth. And so they at least had some baseline awareness of, oh, this club exists. Yeah. And once totally. I had that first group of members, people who weren't there, their friends told their friends and they showed up and they brought them along with them. Yeah. And that's where the food comes in too, because yes. they're like, oh, they have food at this club. And then I okay. snag them with ecology and they're like, oh, I'm interested now. <laughs> I'm, I'm trapped. So perfect. I'd say those were two most important things. It's just planning in advance, I guess, not winging it. I'm the type of person who 
does wing things a lot of time. Oh, right. So okay. that was an adjustment in learning in my Gold Award project and my Silver Award. I learned that too, is that yeah. I have to plan in advance, keep totally. records of all that stuff. And it goes much more smoothly than if I'm just like, and I'm throwing here and I'm throwing here yes. and what is going on? Yes. And there's like, now there's a sense of control and not just total chaos. Yes. Yes. Totally. Perfect. Well, this is, I love just kind of like the progress that it's made. And it sounds like, honestly, the most epic club ever. I, I kind of <laughs> want to join, but I, it's not at my school. It's okay. <laughs> um, but how are you kind of like spending, you, you love ecology, you love gardening. How is that going to kind of follow you to college, even though you're leaving your club at your school? So I'm very, very excited for college. As you probably yes. know, as a fellow senior, very yes, excited so for excited college. I'm excited to graduate, <laughs> yes. move on. Yes, totally. Second semester senior year is hitting It's hard. hitting, yes, so totally. So I'm planning to major in civil engineering, but cool. I hope to get my intensive in environmental engineering, cool. which okay. I've had I several agree. people ask me, they're like, do you know what that is like? It, you know that's not just like going out and frolicking. I'm like, yes, it's water. Like, yes. I understand it's There's water. Nice. Yes. So I kind of <laughs> hope to continue it in that aspect of totally. my job, like kind of just working through environmental protection, like through building stuff. So yeah. like so some things we don't think about, like we think about our personal impact a lot on like what we can specifically do to like mitigate environmental impact. But a lot of what we yeah. do is like in how we do construction and that kind of stuff. And so that interests me. Like, for example, totally. like dam management is like a whole like water yeah. systems and all of that is just its own like whole thing with yeah. managing water. And that's just one aspect of how we interact with the environment totally so you can tell i'm very interested no in this i topic. love it yeah so that's very important to me that i'm totally. able because when i was first starting out and like interested in environmental stuff i was like you know i i might do environmental science environmental research and then i kind of yeah. realized Whew, that's a lot of sitting and researching but i'm like i can also be on the application side of things totally. like there are people out there who are doing the research but there has to also be people in the construction willing to apply that research to totally. like, help the exactly. environment and so that that's my plan for undergrad and then grad school i'm i'm hoping to pursue the same thing and then i hope to get a law degree in environmental law we'll see that's if so cool we'll yeah. see if that pans out you know i'm 18 i got a lot of life you left have to so. like go through as it comes yeah be ready to like yeah so i i exactly. don't know if it will end up that way i i hope it does it sounds yeah. fun um but who knows? We'll see where life takes but me, you know? It's so it's so much, like, I think, cooler to, like, get ready for college when you have, like, a good idea of what you want to do. Yes. I know it's super stressful. It's just, like, everything's coming to an end. And then you're also, like, the added stress of you're, like, changing your whole life up. But, like, it's so much better that you know you love something and you're super excited to study it. And that's, like, I'm going into STEM field. I'm studying environmental science. And I'm just, like, so passionate about it and I really love it so I'm like it's less scary if that makes yes. sense yeah and yes. I definitely have friends who are like undecided or they're like they're yeah, just going same. in undecided I'm like I, okay good for you I have no idea how you are surviving right now I would exactly. be so stressed out but exactly. good for you <laughs> yes they're like I'm I don't know what I want to do with my life and I like can't answer questions about college because it stresses me out too much so I understand that and like it makes total sense but there is just like comfort in knowing that you're going to like study something you really care about and be able to like kind of expand on it more than you were ever able to do in high school. Yeah. And I think it really helps to have that passion, especially in like a STEM field where, you know, yeah. like, like I'm like, okay, I've gotten generally good grades so far, but I know college is like a different beast. Like yes. I'm just like, yeah. oh my goodness. Exactly. So yes. I'm just, I'm just like, it takes comfort knowing that I'm going to be passionate about what I'm learning. Like, totally. like if I was kind of like, meh about what I'm doing, then I feel like it would be a lot harder. Like when I got to those hard classes and I'm just like, why am I doing this? Yeah, but it helps exactly. to have that drive to know, like I'm doing this for a reason. Like I have a goal that I'm trying to achieve yes. and it just kind of makes it easier if exactly. that makes sense. No, it makes total sense to me. That's so great. Um, our last like kind of finishing up here uh, question is about conservation. We both are passionate about that. So I was wondering like, what is your go-to conservation tip? For people getting into it, people who want to like kind of change their lifestyle, be more green, be more eco-friendly, kind of what's what's something you would tell them? I know you said finishing, but can I say multiple? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so totally. Yeah, I have 
<laughs> a few. So as I mentioned earlier, my big thing is single-use plastics. Yeah. So for anybody who might not know like what single-use plastics are or kind of what that's about, uh, single-use plastics, as the name implies, is any kind of plastic that you just use once and then you throw away. Mm -hmm. So an example of that might be a straw, like a cup lid, even like plastic bags that you would totally. get from supermarkets, stuff like that. So it's either avoiding using those things all out or finding repurposes for them. So like, for right. example, if you ended up getting like a plastic bag, which you could just not get by having a reusable bag, but if totally. you get a plastic bag for whatever reason, finding a way to reuse it or like with straws, like having a reusable straw in hand or just not using straw, stuff like that. Totally. Um, so that would be first tip is finding out how to mitigate using single-use plastics. Totally. Uh, another thing that we talk about a lot in Scuba Troop, which is the troop I'm part of, cool. um, yeah. is sunscreen. So Great. I know you had a previous guest that was from Scuba Troop. I don't know if she talked about sunscreen at all. I don't think she did. Well, okay. share with us. Share okay. With us. So there is a lot of sunscreen out there that kind of advertises itself as being eco-friendly, but mm. it's actually not. So right. there's a lot of chemicals in sunscreen that are really bad for fish in the environment, especially corals. They can be super bad. So right. kind of doing the research behind what sunscreens are actually safe for the oceans. So there's totally. a couple of chemicals that are just big no-no chemicals, I guess, uh, that would be bad in sunscreen. So just yeah. doing the research on your own sunscreen that you have in your house and seeing, like, is this actually safe for the environment? And if not, like... Yes, I, I went down, like, a YouTube spiral on this subject, and I was like, okay, we're mineral sunscreen family now. Like, none of none of this, like anything else only mineral yeah yeah and that's something i definitely like that's a thing that i experience every day and i still experience at my school too like i'm on the track team so we're constantly yeah. getting that sunscreen everywhere because yes. we get very crispy otherwise but like people are constantly like they'll ask me like, oh do you have spray sunscreen i'm like no i don't use spray sunscreen at all and they're like <laughs> Okay. Um, um, okay. So that's definitely something that I still experience a lot with, like, people being like, oh, that's kind of weird. Um, yeah. But I think it's getting more normal. I, I yeah. hope it's getting more normal. Yeah. And that's, that's like, a really interesting point because I feel like a lot of people, like, they're like, oh, these lifestyle changes are like, so unreasonable. Like, why would I, like, change all this up because it's just too much work? And so that's a really interesting point because I always feel like it's really important to, like, compromise and like do the little things that we can all agree on so that's like that was cool because I tried to like make my whole family go vegetarian I was like on a very like climate change like we need to be better for the environment change our whole lifestyle and I was like guys we have to go vegetarian like we just have to do it um but yeah we were talking about the importance of compromise and so my dad was telling me that it was unrealistic that we would cut out all meat because we like eat me every single day and so we were able to like compromise and be like okay let's go vegetarian for one month of the year so every january we go vegetarian and we're talking about doing like meatless mondays um so i i love that point like you can't really get everyone or people might like think you're weird if you're trying to like take everything over at once and that that's their opinion uh we continue our lifestyles as we as we want to but um for people who do think that way there's like options for them and you can like let them know like there's little ways you can start. In the, can oh, yeah, help. definitely. Yeah. And I think that point about compromise is super, super important. So, like, for me personally, I, I am full vegetarian. But, cool. yes. like, <laughs> I, I started out just eating, like, kind of a plant-based diet. But for me, I am the person who is, like, with rules for myself. So, like, if I wanted to eat completely plant-based, I am not a very disciplined person. So I need, like, <laughs> I need like a rule in place, you know, yeah. like, just hard and fast rule. Because I know if I give myself that leeway, I'll be like, I'll just eat meat all the time. Yes. Yes. So I kind of needed that structure for me just yeah. to be able to, like, do it. Totally. Um, but I do get questions about it. And sometimes, like, people are like, you know, are you that, like, kind of weird vegan stereotype where you're going to, like, <laughs> force it on me and stuff? I'm like... Not a vegan, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, n like, no. But, right. like, I understand other people's perspective. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm, I feel like it's our job that, like, as conservationists, that we live yeah. our own lives and, like, be the example to see, like, exactly. you know, yeah. you don't have to go all the way. But, like, yeah. you can make small changes in your life to get there. Totally. Like, 
for example, the not using Ziploc bag things. I just have little containers in my lunch and that's not really a big change in my day. I just wash them, put them in the dishwasher. Yeah. So it's small changes like that, that I feel like really make the difference in people. And it makes the cultural difference, even if it's not yeah. making a huge impact on the overall waste. What it is doing, it's making other people aware of conservation. Yeah. So, Definitely. and then if all the people are aware of conservation, then it is making a big change, right? Yes. So exactly. I feel like that compromise is really important. You don't have to go all the way right off the bat. Like yeah. you have to get into it, learn about it first. Exactly. Like find your reason for why you're doing it. Yes. I feel like it's super important. Totally. And I found that in ecology club too. It's like, why are you here? Like not, yeah. not in the rude way. Like, no. not like, why are you here? <laughs> but like in the way of like, what is your motivation for learning about this? Yeah. You know, like, why, why are you interested? Like, are you interested in saving the planet? Are you just curious about like environmental science, all that kind of stuff? So I think it's important for people to find their why. Yeah, like, totally. Like for me personally, part of my why for going vegetarian, my mom was vegetarian first, quite honestly, and she yeah. kind of influenced me in that. And then I watched uh, very sad documentaries about the meat industry, yes. and I was like, I was like, oh my gosh. I feel like I've seen everyone was like, uh, we learned in class that like meat consumption is like the leading cause of global warming, and that for me was like a like a trigger. I was like, oh, like I just it kind of like struck a chord, and so then you're like, oh, I really do want to do something about that. I love that like find your why that's really important and like if at the end of the day you can like convince one person or someone just like tells you that they made a change because you care about it and they see you care about it that's like so cool I, I love know. I would love that hearing that if someone said that to me and I was like, like oh my gosh. really oh my yeah. gosh <laughs> God, I feel so cool right now exactly <laughs> yes well that's everything we have for today Alex thank you so much for being on today's episode thank it's you so for having me and thank you guys for listening to another episode of Life as Girls. We'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this episode of Life as Girls, be sure to write a review and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And a big thank you to our sponsor, the Girl Scouts of Central Texas. You can learn more about them at www.gsctx.org. If you are interested in sponsoring this podcast, or if you have a topic you'd like for us to talk about, email us at communications at gsctx.org. See you next time.